afternoon guys, welcome to TMX Adventures, my name is Lisa Keegan and uh, excuse my little bit of a different setup today, the camera has just arrived, this, the new one however just before, so I've barely set up properly but I wanted to come live to you guys and show you uh, some more about your Thermomix. Now this week is all about the blade cover and I've been spending a fair bit of time talking to you guys about the brand new blade cover, this one. But today I'm going to talk to you a little more as well about the traditional one which also can be used for most of these recipes. There's a, some limitations to this but not too many. So I'm going to show you today and talk to you about both. But let's get started straight away with these beautiful sous vide pears. Now, um, we love sous vide pears. We, it's something that as a little sneaky dessert we'll often have when the kids are in bed. Uh, really easy and quick with the Thermomix. So let me show you how it is a TM6 recipe. However, there's a TM5 version. And I'm going to tell you if you've got a TM31 where you don't have a blade cover, there are recipes for you too. So today is not just for those of you who have a blade cover, as much as I'm putting a spotlight on the blade cover. Do excuse the camera in front, work in progress guys. I do hope you'll still learn something though today. Do say hi if you're watching by the way. Uh, tag friends and family who have a Thermomix or a Thermo cooker. I'd love them to get inspired and get more out of their Thermomix as well. So straight away let's get to start cooking because we're going to start with making a beautiful syrup to start off with. So start cooking. First thing it asks for is some sugar. Now depending on your taste buds depends on how much sugar you will put into your Thermomix. Now I'm going to use a monk fruit sweetener which is a low carb option. Just use raw sugar, caster sugar or even brown sugar if that's all you've got. Work with what you've got. Don't let that stop you making something because you haven't necessarily got exactly what it asks for. So into the machine goes 120 grams. Now I feel like that's a fair amount, a little bit too much. I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to put about 80 grams in. So that's how much I'm going to put in. Hey Faye, hey Juanita and hey Sharon, lovely to have you guys on this afternoon. All right, 150 grams. No, what did I say? 80 grams. Actually, I might go less. I might go 60. I might go half. All right, let's just go 60 grams. All right. Next up. By the way, I've also got a little a bench. We're going for an island bench in here. This kitchen is so far back. I've actually got you guys zoomed in a fair bit, but my camera's a good six steps that way. Uh, so watch this space transform in the coming weeks as I can make it more friendly for you guys to get more out of your Thermomix. Next thing is the vanilla. Forgot to get the vanilla out of the fridge, so I'm going to skip it because for in time essence, I did forget to get it out. Uh, but I did make it myself. So over Christmas, I did make a batch of vanilla straight off Cookie Do. Check that recipe out. Super easy. I do source my vanilla from Vanilla & Co online. I buy in big bulk. Uh, and I just airtight it when it's done and it just lasts forever. Even though they give you best buy dates, it just continues to last so long as you keep it airtight. Okay, cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, in it goes. And then we're going to put in some water. It's only a tiny little bit of water. It's only 50 grams. We're making a syrup to coat your pears. Okay, lid's gonna go on. And it's going to cook for four minutes at 100 degrees speed two. So I know a lot of you guys use these videos to cook along with afterwards. So this is your time if you are doing a cook along way to these videos to actually get your pears ready. So it calls for four pears, um, halved, peeled and decored. Now, I'm not going to peel it. We really try and eat as much of a, a whole food as we can. So I'm not going to peel mine. I'm even not going to core mine. That's just because I can't be bothered. Um, but I am going to halve them. Mine are quite small. So I'm actually going to today try and fit into my packet um, more than the four. So normally you've got two packets, two packets to sous vide in. And normally you would put four in, four halves in each. I'm going to try and fit six in. So we've all got some each. Now, those of you, as I said, who don't have a blade cover, whether it's the the older version, which is no longer available, or the new version, there is a, a poached pear recipe that you actually do, actually I think there's two, it's a red wine version and a white wine version, that you do in your simmering basket. It's on Cookie Do, it is amazing, it's actually out the Cooking For You and Me book, so those of you who have a TM31, or maybe a TM5 with their good old recipe chips, 
Uh, by the way, cook keys are in stock for those of you who have been waiting on, uh, well they were in stock last week, for those of you waiting on the cook key. But it's in that book, Cooking for You and Me. So the, cook, the cookbook is dedicated if you're just cooking for two of you. Um, but uh, we're using sous vide bags. Now these are from the mix shop. They come with a little vacuum sealer. I'm going to show you how to not have to use the vacuum sealer today, mainly because I can't find mine, which scares me a little. I've unpacked 99% of my boxes and I can't find my vacuum sealer. So I'm going to show you how to do it today without the vacuum sealer. This is also how you do it if you were using a heat proof glide bag. You would also do it the same method where you put it in water. Now I do love the TM6 how it's got a preview button. So you might be able to notice on my little spare double up screen up here. You can see up top here it's got preview. That's one of the latest updates to the TM6. So you can actually click across and it tells you what to do next, which is great because it means you be more organized. We used to use our full view to do that on a TM5. TM6 kind of lets you press ahead. So it tells you to transfer the syrup into a bowl. We're going to transfer it into here. I reckon though, if I wasn't doing so much sales, doing a half batch, just put your pears in here and pour it over the top. <laughs> I don't know that I'd worry about this. It's because I pre-prepped, so I'm going to pour mine over here. But otherwise, pears in here, put the syrup straight on top in your bag. Then it tells you then how to coat it. Then we're going to do this sous vide, all right? So that's low and slow. Now let me just, I've got two minutes, no, a minute and a half. So let me just jump over to the difference between the blade covers. Now these ones are no longer available in the mix shop, okay? These are our um, poly propylene uh, original style. Now, these pop down over exactly the same as this one does. You'll notice the same shape, okay? You can see the same shape, difference being the little grates in this one. So the limitation of this is purely at grating. You cannot grate something with this, okay? You can still slow cook, you can still sous vide, you just can't grate, okay? That's the limitation of this style. This one, you've got the added benefit of the grating. So if you do find grating hard because you've got poor wrists or fingers or arthritis or you just don't like the peeler because it peels off your fingernails, then this one's fantastic. It is in the mix shop, it is $57.95 or something like that uh, in the mix shop. So that's this one. But as well as that, just a little side note, those of you with TM31s, these don't fit, okay? But if you are a TM31 owner, I have a special news for you guys that was announced just before, hence the reason I'm running really late today. Um, there is going to be a trade in offer for those of you who have a TM31 or a TM5 coming. If you like the details, comment below, PM me, DM me, send me an email message, whatever suits you, and I'll give you the details I know about that. But it's super exciting, a great way to get a TM6 on the bench, all right? so. Um, but your TM31 is still fantastic, okay? So as much as I'm saying there's a draining off of coming, a TM31, I loved my TM31. It served me really well for quite some years and I kept it for a long time too. I did love it. However, I do love my TM6 and I love my TM5 as well, okay? They all have a place and a purpose. Um, but yes, the, the guided recipes on TM6 is just what hands over heels I've got, you know, I love cannot live without guided cooking. Um, but in saying that, I'm going to come to you next week and show you non-guided recipes. So, you know, watch this space. Hence the reason I was actually incidentally survey surveying you guys on what actually models you want, you've got, because I want to know how I can serve you best. So that was actually completely incidental to the announcement. So, blade covers. All right, let's talk more about that in a second. Let's go next. Actually, you know, the other thing I like both of them for is poach eggs. Amazing. All right, transfer the syrup to a bowl um, and coat your pears. So that just means we do a bit of this and we do, oh, I'm foggy on my glasses, do a little bit of that. And you can see how beautiful and cinnamony that is. All right, next. If you are doing this in your simmering basket version, have a look at those other recipes. You'll notice they do have wine in them. You can certainly omit the wine and just increase your spices. They are beautiful recipes. Highly recommend them. Okay, so place four halves into the bags. We'll do that in a second. Um, repeat with the other ones and put the syrup in there as well. Now, as you can see, this one's actually got a video on how to put your blade cover in. It's a simply a matter of 
putting it over the top. Regardless of which model you've got, match up the high sides with the high sides, plop it over the top and you're good to go. Now I've heard some of you guys are having trouble taking the blade cover out. If that's the case, release the blades, okay? Once you've got it all empty later, all the food's out, release the blades and get it all wiggle, it'll come off, all right? Um, it seems to just be like what we find with the Femimix is everything comes tight and sharp. And so it seems to be that they come tight, some of them. So, okay, place the seal bags into the mixing bowl and fully cover with water. So now I've got to get my hands dirty. Let me show you how to do this. Actually, before I do, I'm going to get a bit ready. I'm going to put about a litre of water in there. Just preempting the next steps because I want to pop the air out of the bag, submerging it. I've actually put about 1.3 in there because I want to now take the air out of the bags. So, I need to touch the pairs. I'm going to see if I can put six in. Okay, excuse the fingers. It's actually going to be probably more a matter of can I fit six into the Thermomix? But mine aren't massive, okay? They're actually quite reasonable sized pairs. They are fairly, um, I'm going to say not ripe, is that a word? Two, four, six, there we go. They're not fully ripe yet, so they actually aren't soggy. The kids would probably eat them. They're not that hard that the kids would not eat them, but they're also not soft. You know how, yeah, you know what I mean. All right, so I've left a little corner of this open because I'm now going to submerge it in my water, and then, I'll, then I'm going to seal it up. So as I submerge it, that lets the air out, which allows me to seal it. If I don't get rid of all the air, it actually doesn't get covered with water enough to do the cook process well. Okay, now we're going to have to heat this water up in a second. So it actually heats up, excuse my back as I seal this up, and take this out and I start the, the heating process while I seal up the next one. Add some lemon juice. Okay, Our lemon juice protects your blades. While we're working so low temperature, it can increase the chances of your blades getting rust. All right, so, and vinegar is what cleans off rust as well. So if you ever do get a rust spot, um, put some vinegar on it and give it a scrub. I've actually never had a rust spot, I've got to be honest, uh, all this time, but we do cook with a fair bit of um, acidic food anyway, just by normally. Okay, insert the measuring cup. And that's going to come up to 80 degrees and it's going to take 15 minutes. So we may or may not be together in 15 minutes time to show you the next step. However, it is as simple as putting the bags in, making sure they're submerged, and turning the Thermomix on. Now, it's going to cook for, I'll tell you how long, one hour and 30 minutes. So it is a recipe that you need to allow time for. You can't have dinner and then sit down and make this and expect to be able to eat it straight away. It's kind of going to be ready at 30. So it is a recipe that's well worth preparing in advance. However, it's quite a fancy recipe. So I would be saying if you're having a dinner party, having family over, friends over, it's a perfect recipe. Um, also because it's quite a clean recipe. You can kind of then leave these bags aside in a thermo server, keep it nice and hot. Uh, in your thermo server, you can put some water around it and then serve it up later and it'll all be still piping hot. So it's one of those ones that you can do in advance and have it ready for later. So there is a bit of this syrupy stuff left. I do really wish I'd poured it straight into the bags and not over the food, to be honest, because this is going to get messy. Half into this bag. I'll have to open the other one up and put half in. And this will be ready to go in. Now, if you want to shortcut this recipe, you guys will know that I love giving you hints and tips. If you want to shortcut this time frame, all you need to do is actually put some hot water into it instead. All right, you want it to get to 80 degrees. So you can actually use your original screens on your Thermomix and get it up to 80 degrees. As soon as it's at 80, bags go in, an hour and a half cook time. It's going to save you 15 minutes of heat up time. All right, so just a little tip for the sous vide. Um, you're not going to put the whole lot of boiling water. Just side note, don't put it all as boiling water. You don't need it to be 100 degrees. You need it to be 80 degrees. So mostly boiling water, time to get a tap water, and you'll be right to go. Remember to squeeze of um, lemon or some vinegar in there. Protect those blades. But that is sous vide in your thermomix. Really great way to cook. Over Christmas, Greg and I had quite a few sous vide dinners where we did things like chicken and salmon. Uh, chicken thighs were beautiful. Now we did finish the chicken on the barbecue. We just seared the sides to make it crispy at the end uh, and make the syrup that was on it stick to it. But absolutely beautiful. It just melts in your mouth. It's a beautiful way of cooking food. So give it a go. 
As I said though, if you've got no blade cover, simmering basket is your answer. You will be limited in your capacity because obviously a simmering basket is smaller, but it still doesn't stop you making amazing food with them mix. Now, if you want more information about me and what I offer, maybe you're brand new watching, you'll notice I've put a little cool thing at the top corner, QR code. That takes you through my website. Okay, now on my website, you will find the ways that I can support you. You'll find these videos put up there as well. You will find how to book a demo. You will find my email, my mobile, more than enough information, even my blog for my travels, although I forgot to put the ends up. There's been way too much happened the last eight weeks, and I haven't put the last month or so of the travels up. But you'll find lots of resources and tools over there. So go over there, subscribe to my mailing list once a month, and I'm getting ready to send you guys out a newsletter, recipe inspiration, latest news from me and from Thermomix. Great way to be kept up to date and make sure you're on my database so you're the first one to know about things as well. But I hope you've had a great afternoon, enjoyed these videos. I hope you take away lots of hints and tips. Let me know if there's more things that you'd like to learn about on how to use your Thermomix. Um, I really do make, love making sure you're using it to its potential. Uh, and getting the very most out of it. There is so much it can do, and it really is a lifesaver in the kitchen. Uh, whether you're cooking for yourself or for a family, it doesn't matter, we all need to eat. So, and the Thermomix does it for us without us having to be there. So it gives us back our most uh, important commodity, which is time. But anyway, guys, that's enough yammering on from me today. Have a great afternoon. I'll be back here for tomorrow. Can't remember what's on the menu. It is more blade cover cooking. Um, I think there's one more day of peeling. We're going to do beetroot towards the end of the week, but the rest is all other skills and tips for your blade cover and tips for those of you who don't have them as well. But have a great afternoon.